Hello everyone. My name is Olga Klamut and I'm from the first faculty of medicine at Charles University in Prague. I'm a PhD student there and I'm going to be telling you about how interoception regulates our well-being through the lens of a balanced time perspective. So first of all, interoception uh, this is the body's ability to receive sense information from receptors and that leads to responding to internal bodily states and using that information to regulate all of the functional systems of the body. So basically, interoception is how we feel ourselves and we can have external and internal stimuli, which we then interpret, which then affects our behaviors. So external stimuli are the senses, everything that we pick up by touch, by smell, by sight, and so on. And external endogenous um, stimuli are cardiac functions, hunger, or pain, for example. And we could increase our interoception. This is called the interoceptive sensitivity. And it's a skill that we have, all of us have it, and we can increase it. Um, which leads, the increase of this interoceptive sensitivity, sensitivity leads to um, a greater awareness and self-efficacy of our own homeostatic state. So why are we talking about the embodiment uh, in the context of time? So in order to feel ourselves, in order to gain this interoceptive sensitivity, time is a prerequisite towards that. So we have to be in the present moment to sense ourselves. Um, just like with the breath, we cannot rewind a breath or feel a future breath. It is everything that is rooted in the present moment, so in the balanced time perspective. Um, as an example, not being in the present moment, so not being in the body per se, is uh, associated with disassociation or hypervigilance, for example. So this has a lot to do with how our autonomic nervous system responds to the externals of our life. So this is, but what I'm using here is time perspective is kind of like a symbol of the mind and interoception is a symbol of the body and it's a two-way street between the two. So interoceptive measurements allow for a deeper understanding of time perspective. So there's a field of biohacking, which is very popular and interesting right now. So there's these different rings or bands like the whoop band or Fitbit, for example, so these are different technology things that we use to get a deeper sense of what's going on in our bodies and how our bodies respond to external stimuli. For example, how much sweet sleep we're getting or how active we are, what's going on, how our bodies are reacting to external circumstances. And we can count that and actually quantify it um, in terms of heart rate variability, skin conductivity, blood glucose accuracy, and cortisol levels. Or there's also qualitative measures such as self-report questionnaires, and there's plenty of those. Some of them are associated with exact um, circumstances, for example, body image, and so on. So this is uh, all rooted in the context of homeostasis. So in order to adapt, we need to know where we are in the present moment, just like it is with time perspective. As we know our time perspective profile, we can get an idea of what to do externally, what to focus our minds on to balance out that pro that profile, to come into a more of a balanced time perspective. And this is congruent, it's like a mirror of the process of the body coming back into its natural homeostatic state. So the entire process of maintaining bodily homeostasis uses interoceptive processes, which include conscious and unconscious levels of cognitive processing. So both of these concepts, interoception and time perspective, can be viewed on a scale of balance and disbalance, just like we count uh, the deviation from the balanced time perspective as a measurable tool of assessing one's time perspective profile. So homeostasis of the autonomic nervous system is a sense of self-regulation and this all happens unconsciously until we focus on it, until we increase our interoceptive sensitivity and gain control over our autonomic nervous system, therefore gaining control of our reactions to the external world. So the main thing is that balanced time perspective is a mirror of somatic homeostasis. So 
there are biological markers of time perspective that many of us here at this conference, us researchers, have already assessed, such as stress cortisol levels, um, how it's associated to burnout syndrome, for example. Um, and this points to a direction in which TP profiles are associated with stress physiology. And this calls for a very interesting exploration of psychobiological modulation based on time perspective and bodily signals, which, like I said before, are measured directly by biomarkers of interoception. So I conducted an extensive review of current research between interoception and TP. And there's not much. Honestly, there's not much at the moment. There's um, not much information or research being done. What is being done at the moment uh, that I found is that it, how we sense our bodies, our interoception, is associated with uh, retrospective temporal distortions. So how and what we remember in time. Or, for example, the accuracy of time duration perception. Um, also, the greater our interoception, the more accurately we reproduce time intervals, which is very interesting. So that was just a few examples of the research, but some of the overlapping general findings are, for, first of all, behavioral, so both in increased interoception and a more balanced time perspective lead to greater emotional regulation, increased perception of presence, and increased agency of ourselves, as well as increased cognitive flexibility. Um, there's a neuroanatomical structure, the insular cortex, which is an underlying neural system for both of these constructs. And a uh, neuroanatomist, Bud Craig, Professor Bud Craig, um, he formed a model of homeostatic emotional regulation, which basically maps out where in the brain these processes happen. So he kind of split the brain into the left and right forebrain, and one of these, the right forebrain, is congruent with a broad negative effect, which in turn is a representative trait of the sympathetic nervous system activation, which is the stress response which is needed, which is very motivational, but at the same time, if we get stuck in this uh, sympathetic nervous system activation, we go into a sense of hypervigilance. So basically it's stress, it's stress all the time. So that leads to inflammation, that leads to disease, and that leads to broadly the lack of mental well-being and somatic well-being as well. So in the left forebrain, um, Professor Craig, he pointed out that this is uh, associated with positive effect and also time passing quickly. So bringing about feelings of positive effect and is associated with parasympathetic activity, which is the rest and digest system of our body, which is very much needed to regenerate our organs, our hormones and our digestion and so on, all of the systems in our body. So this is um, just a construct of the review and what it came up with. So like left forebrain, right forebrain. And the left forebrain is associated with greater interoceptive sensitivity, therefore a more balanced time perspective. Uh, there is subjective time contraction, so time passes by a bit quicker, a bit more real in that sense. There is increased heart rate variability, which is very progressive in terms of health. And in general, there's physiological restoration as opposed to physiological stress, which is um, accumulated in the right forebrain. And it has to do with time passing by slowly. There's subjective time dilation. Um, and there's decreased interoceptive sensitivity. And we're further away from the balanced time perspective in this case. So the point is that there's this bi-directional process between the brain and the body. Um, uh, there was also always this either or discussion regarding this but it's a two-way street so in order to regulate ourselves in order to come into a higher mental well-being state of mental health there's two processes there's bottom up so there's somatic therapies that we could use to increase our interoception and there's also top-down processes like time perspective therapy for example which balances out our time perspective and brings us closer to the balanced one and this brings about um, the last part, which are the implications for future research. Uh, there's a lot to be done in terms of finding out the neural mechanisms of TP profiles, of converging balanced time perspective and mindfulness, which is a very hot topic, mindfulness, uh, meditation as well, 
Um, there's also a need for longitudinal data in regards of how raising our interoceptive sensitivity affects our time perspective, as well as focusing on the identified present time perspective profiles, especially eudaimonic and expanded. What happens in the autonomic nervous system then? So in summary, the goal is to explain the co-regulation of interoception and balanced time perspective. So providing tools and practices for flexible self-regulation. So gaining agency over our nervous systems, gain, gaining agency over our bodies, and therefore facilitating resilience and mental health and well-being. And that's it. We're at the time mark. So thank you very much for tuning in.